Durant pull up jumper. Off the rim and in. Oh! And the Thunder win! Oh, come on, let's sing the Thunder song. Wait, wait. When you hear the sound of thunder, don't you get too scared. Just grab your thunder buddy and say these magic words. Hello and welcome back to a preseason edition of the Thunder Buddies podcast. We're officially in year two. I guess we'd say, is media day kick it off, don't know? What do you mean year two? Oh, I'm sorry, my bad. I'm in year seven. You're in year two. Hey, I, I'm, I'm what you call a selfish person, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> you said it. <laughs> no, um, year seven. But year- I guess this is year two of the Thunder Buddies podcast, right? That's what I meant. That's okay, what I meant. there you go. Yeah, we'll, right. we'll go with that. Okay, and to kick off year two, of course, we had to bring special guest in his lime green coat today, looking suave, Barry Trammell. Gentlemen, how are you? I'm good. How about you? Pretty good. Well, next to last day of September or the last day of September? Last day of September. Last, last day of last September. Day. You've yeah. got to love it. I don't know. Yeah, fall. Barry, what's your favorite season? Autumn, not even close. Well, so that's we're why going in the year season. Used to be October, my favorite month, but the weather's gotten so warm. Not necessarily this year, but my favorite favorite month now is November. How much of that has to do with Thanksgiving? I know you love Quite a bit. Thanksgiving. I love Thanksgiving oh, and, and football. Would, Football's a lot of it, and the NBA starts, and the and the smell in the air, and the, the weather. Leaves changing I love the weather. And all of that. The weather's the biggest thing, but I like football too. Slater, what's your favorite season? Any month that has to do with summer is my favorite. I got you. I'm a Any, partial, I'm partial that has to spring, to do with summer. late spring, very, very early summer. Like, not I, too hot. You sound like George Costanza. Pleasant. Yeah. Anyway, I want to talk thunder. Let's talk I think some we got thunder. Some media day yesterday. I thought that was a great media day yesterday. You guys have been to all of them, or at least almost all of them, yeah, I'm sure. I've been to all of them. Uh, I think. That one, I know you weren't in the press conferences, but I to me that seemed like it came out with a ton of stuff, more than maybe in years past, more than last year, I thought. Barry? Uh, it seemed like they could have condensed it. Brought in uh, Steven Adams, Reggie Jackson, Perk, and Kendrick Perkins, and everybody else could have stayed home. Yeah. Well, we got a, I, I enjoyed the Serge Sir Ibaka interview. My, I think my favorite part of the day is when somebody asked him uh, – so what's your early thoughts on Mitch McGarry? And he went, Mitch McGarry? <laughs> Mitch McGarry? <laughs> Mitch McGarry? Who's, I, Mitch, who's he, Mitch McGarry? You know, he caught some flack on that for the on the radio for not knowing who Mitch McGarry was. I cut him some I, I you know, I, I didn't come down hard on him though. Um, I agree as far as he, he was right. He's been in Congo all all summer and then he went well, out, obviously yeah. then went and played for Team Spain in Barcelona. And, you know, he's been doing his own thing. And he, like he said, I got back like two days ago is what he said. But at the same time, like, I think it's pretty funny that he, like, I think we've established he does not follow the ongoings of the NBA offseason. No. Does he, do you think he goes into, like, he's going to go to, uh, you know, play the Cavs and be like, oh, wow, LeBron's on the Cavs? I think he'll know about LeBron. But he doesn't know too much below that. Like, he's going to go to teams and be like, oh, that's just surprising. I didn't know this guy. So he knows about LeBron, but he might not know about Kevin Love. I think he probably has gotten love, but not much below that. Like, he's going to go against, I bet like, he doesn't know. I bet he does not know that Calderon has been traded to the Knicks for Tyson Chandler. I bet he doesn't know that. I'm trying to think of, uh, like, how you think he's going to go to Dallas and be like, whoa, Chandler well, Parsons? I thought you were on Houston. A little dang in Miami. <laughs> yeah, he's gonna, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't know that Trevor Ariza now is a rocket. That's great. Jeremy Lin in, in L.A. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that must be kind of fun for him. Like, oh, this team's different this year. He just goes into the game. It's probably it? like Steven Adams last year. He had no idea who guys were. Remember that? Who was yeah. that big guy in the no, preseason game? I remember it. Uh, it was it was, was the it moment Dun- I realized how like different of a rookie Adams was. Was it Mike was. Dunleavy? Yes. He went out because uh, Mike Dunleavy's a kind of tall guy, and, and Joe Keep Noah's – they're probably near the same height. Yeah. So it was preseason game. They're going out, and Durant's going out there, and Adams just goes up and starts – trying to cover Mike Dunleavy thinking he's the center and Durant walks over like no man like you got to guard no that guy's the center this guy's a 3 and he's like oh okay like he didn't know who was the center just, that guy looks tall um i thought it was funny like, like i said i cut him some slack cuz his summer's been busy but it is very interesting to me cuz you know Kevin Durant knows every kevin durant tweets like directly after the draft like you know 
You're welcome, Mitch McGarry, to the team. I've been watching your college career. All the guys on the team, I'm sure, knew. Baca. Well, think about it. Guy grew up partially on a dirt floor with 18 siblings or 27, whatever it was. English is his what? Fourth language or fifth language? Fifth. And his worst. His worst. Yeah, worst out of Which five. He's not on the internet trolling for NBA news. No doubt. All the time. So, I, I and don't he know. And him. he knows that. He knows what a lot of people have not figured out. He knows that you, you win in the NBA through hard work. Yeah. So, rather than getting on the internet, he'll just go down to the gym and shoot, is what he'll do. If somebody wants him to worry about next season's roster he said well how about if i just go get better yeah he's just not eat up with this stuff like we are and that's funny to me and, and like i said it's not even a, a bad trade or, or anything i just i thought it was just a funny thing that happened yesterday it was probably my favorite moment of the day you gotta know who your co-workers are i'm sorry like if, well, we, hired well, someone, if we hired someone and for three months <laughs> three and a half i didn't know that we had hired someone like that's bad. Come on, I, I don't. Okay, it, it's let me not say the that. worst thing in the world. Like I don't, I don't blame him. Like I'm not coming down hard on him. RFD. But he should know who his teammates are. RFD. You think if you came in on a ten o'clock on a Thursday night, you'd know everybody that's working in the office? Ten o'clock on a Thursday night. I, well, but I think. No, wait, 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 well, wait. We got, wait, we well, got a question well, on the, it's, before it's the court. A, it's a very good question, Barry. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. I was working in the office last night at about nine o'clock, and I gotta admit, two there guys strolled go. in. I'm like, I didn't know who their names. There I, didn't you know, go. I didn't know their names. Look, I will. Case closed. No case, not closed. Because to me, look, if Serge Ibaka walked into the season and they said, "Hey, here's this new shooting coach we hired," and he's like, "Oh, I had no idea who that was." That's understandable. You don't know who, like some random people that work in different departments. Yeah, but if you didn't you're know, on a roster with 15, 14 yeah. other players. That'd be like you not knowing somebody in the sports department. Exactly. A That's writer. What I'm, well, I'm talking about. A writer. Not, not someone on the desk who I'd never interact with. You know, well, this guy's what? passing him the ball and interact- rebounding with him and taking not showers yet. with him. Not yet. He, well, he will be. He will be, yes. Okay. You got to know your teammate. Come on, well, Barry. Yeah, you those guys me- are your teammates. Mitch McGarry's not in the, t- in the too deep on the depth chart. We'll see. We'll talk about that. Hey. Let's talk. Hey. Well, moving on to Mitch McGarry and your Michigan guy. Can he crack the rotation? I don't know. It's not really – I don't think we know yet because he's had one practice, zero preseason games, was good in the summer league. Nick Collison's declining. Perry Jones, I don't know if he's going to ever really be able to crack this rotation. I think if Mitch McGarry shows what he did in the summer league and really kind of expands upon it, I think he's got a shot to crack the rotation. I think he he might have a better chance at consistent playing time than Perry Jones. I would agree. Just yeah, maybe. The but way I don't know plays. that Perry Jones isn't going to be in the two deep. He's not in my two deep. Nick, Nick Collison's minutes are going to keep going down. I don't have Perry Jones in the two deep. Well, I'm assuming you got. Who's Nick your Collison. two deep? Barry? Yeah, all right. Let's go with your two deep. Who's your two deep? Russ. Okay, I got the I got the Rush Reggie. The four traditional starters, whether Perk starts or not, who cares? And and Robertson. Okay, there's five. Let's say that's who starts. Second team, Lamb, Jackson, Morrow on the perimeter, Adams, Collison inside. That's ten. So then you got Perry Jones and Mitch McGarry and Tell Fair and whoever else I'm leaving out. I think it's possible, Mitch, not probable, but I think it's possible. That Mitch could take some of Nick Collison's minutes and Kendrick Perkins' minutes. And Kendrick Perkins' minutes. And one thing, Perk's becoming a mildly injury prone. It seems like he's strained. Mildly. Yeah, okay. Very injury prone. It seems like he's straining something or, or, you know, tweaking something now every every month or so. Right. So he's going to probably, you know, we'll see, but I would assume he's going to miss a good chunk of games this year. Uh, That's where McGarry, I think, can get minutes. And I agree with you. I think. We'll see. A lot of it depends on his development. We haven't seen enough from him, but that is a storyline to follow, for sure. All right, another media day thing. Stephen Adams mustache. That was probably the story of media day. It was fun while it lasted. What? So is it gone? He's the he's the one that is dark, it gone? Yeah, it's gone. It's they gone. cut oh, it off. I didn't, you didn't know that. I didn't yeah, notice. Yeah, they today. cut it off. We should have talked it, about it that on day. the video. Uh, you guys didn't know That's on the video. Point. I uh, yeah, Slater told us I, after. Yeah, I told after you guys we after. I, I I found out while you were taping, but anyway, it, it's a sad day. I thought he was going to keep it. That would just the legend would grow. 
As it, if you it need was, any more. It was a great mustache. I mean, I, you guys, so AC, you might not have been here, but RFD will remember when Landry Jones' mustache in 2010 yeah, was, yeah, was all Landry's the rage. Yeah. I mean, he got national acclaim for his mustache. Stephen Adams' mustache blew him out of way the water. Better. With that said, it looked fake. He kind of did. It looked fake. It wasn't. I know it wasn't. It looked like something somebody on Saturday Night Live would wear. That's what even made it funnier, though. You, you, what, what I find funny is, and he even admitted it. I mean, this dude was. It was probably he was chilling with like Robertson and a couple of his other friends at his house the night before, and they were like talking to Old Media Day, you know. Oh, and Adams was like, "I'm gonna shave up. You guys think I should have a mustache for the pictures? It'd be <laughs> hilarious." And they're like, "Yeah, bro, you shouldn't." He's just like. Oh. And the fact that he does this stuff, he's kind of he's like the kid in your high school. I had a few kids where you could, hey, I'm gonna give you three dollars if you super glue your hand to your face, <laughs> and he'd do it. Like I, I, I've got all these stories, and he's like that kid to me. I think, and, and that guy was hilarious. He was, you know, a class clown basically. Well, I'm I'm gonna miss it. it. It was it was a talker. It was a talking point, no doubt about it. What do you think of his interview overall, Barry? Oh, he's always fun to talk to. Yeah, you know what he does. He, now sometimes the answer's silly, but he listens to every question yeah. and answers thoughtfully. Now, sometimes the thought is, let's be silly, but he thinks about, he knows what you've asked, yeah, yeah, no whereas doubt. Russell Westbrook, you know, he just. Oh, which, by the way, we got our first first uh, awkward moment out of Russell Westbrook today at practice. Well, first I day thought of we practice. Had, you weren't in there, but that wasn't the we first one. We had several yesterday. We had several in the uh, well, since Pre- practice has started. Okay. Okay. It was, it was Courtesy bad. of our man, I'll just, Barry Trammell. I'll just say, when Russell Westbrook left okay. his preseason or his media day presser yesterday, Barry Trammell, so everyone could hear go, we know one thing Russell Westbrook didn't do this offseason. He didn't go to charm school. He he yelled that, and everyone started laughing. So you know his thing was bad yesterday. He just – why do we talk to him anymore? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. He's, you can't – He's impossible to talk to, and he's impossible to look away from on the basketball court. Unless you're talking about fashion. I, he doesn't know. He doesn't know any more about fashion than the food dude. <laughs> he's as qualified. Well, he's dude. as qualified to be the food dude as he is some sort of fashion maven. Well, it's absurd. Well, I mean, he knows it's ridiculous. A ton of fashion, Somebody gave him a like clothing a line, and let me tell you why he's got a clothing line. I was in line. New York City last <laughs> summer. I tweeted some pictures. I was in Barney's. I saw last his week, line. You, mean, right? you know why last, he's got? A, did I say last summer? Yeah, last yeah. week I was in. You know why New he's got a clothing line? Because he's the best point guard in the Ru- NBA. Because he's Russell oh, Westbrook. That's why. That, but that's why he's he not the best point guard in the NBA. He's not? He is Well, that not. was going to be, I had this down on, on something to talk to. That was I'm another... sorry, Scotty Brooks and Russell Westbrook, but he is not the best point guard in the well, NBA. Well, if he's not, somebody else has to be, and I can't th- think of anybody to put ahead of him. How about one Christopher nah, put, Emmanuel I'll put, Paul I'll put, right, I'll put Westbrook ahead of him. I, w- I agree with Barry. A lot of people are coming to your side. I am after the playoffs last year. What he did in the playoffs last year, specifically against Chris Paul mm-hmm. in the Clippers series, mm-hmm. and then against Tony Parker in the series. Spurs series, he had a better series. Against, he was against Chris Paul. He had a, he outplayed Chris Paul in the Clippers series, and then I thought he even outplayed what he did in the Clippers series in the Spurs series, especially the last four games. Nobody played well those first right. two, but Westbrook was the best player on the floor, like the last four games, except for Game Six. Best player on the floor is probably Boris. I Steele. think he's more exciting. <laughs> Than Chris Paul, it for the most part, I think he's more electric than Chris Paul, definitely. But in terms of playing the position, running a team, setting up teammates, the truest sense of the phrase point guard, he is still not a better point guard than Chris Paul. There's one thing to be, you know, well, he he look, might be a better player. Are we? T- but he's not a better point guard. Well, guess what? On the roster, they put him down as point guard, and I think he's a better player. I might agree with you that he's a better player, but he does not run his team as a point guard better than Chris Paul. You're starting a franchise tomorrow. I'm taking Russell Westbrook. You're he's start- younger and healthier. He's okay. younger and healthier, and, and he impacts the game, I think, in more ways than Chris Paul. Okay, you're start- But in terms of running a team, if I needed a point guard, I'm taking Chris Paul. Well, I mean— Russell Westbrook is prone to bad decisions a lot. Yeah. Bad shots— I Rush just mean, shots, if like we're, but I think turnovers. we're just putting everyone who's – because, you know, not everything is – you know, tr- not every QB plays the same way. That's true. Not every, you know, three-hitter in baseball rather, hits the same way. But who would you rather, Colin Kaepernick way. or Tom Brady? I'd rather Peyton Manning. Okay. Yeah. Tom uh, 
Peyton Manning or Colin Kaepernick? I'd rather Peyton. Or Michael Vick? I'd rather Peyton Manning over Colin Kaepernick. Or Teddy Bridgewater. Well, bro, you like your boy Bridgewater. (laughs) I'd rather Peyton Manning because I think he's a better player. Not because of, I mean, I guess he is, you know, QB's QB. Well, in the playoffs, I prefer Tom Brady, but. Look, if Colin you Ka- can have Peyton if Manning. I thought Colin Kaepernick was better than Peyton Manning, which I don't, even if he played differently, if he played more exciting, if he was more prone to mistakes, I'd take the better player. Russell Westbrook's a point guard. He doesn't play it in the truest sense of the word. Which means he's not a better point guard than Christopher Emmanuel Paul the third. Jeez. I don't like the word true. What how would you define exactly. it? Just he plays a position and this is how he plays it, and he's better at Chris Paul at playing basketball. And he plays that position that Chris Paul plays. <laughs> I just think he's not – if you're saying is he as good a passer, as good a distributor, no, he's not. Is he as good at maintaining the uh, – oh, the uh, the tempo of a game? Yeah, no, tempo and he's pace, not. Yeah. Chris Paul's better. But I think Westbrook's better defensively. I think Westbrook is a better scorer, and I think Westbrook is a better um, – and, and, th- and those things that – that Paul is better than Westbrook. Westbrook's not bad. Yeah. Westbrook's a good distributor. Yeah, he's just not. I would. I wouldn't call him a great distributor, but he's a good distributor. He's not. The idea that he's a ball hog, I dis. I disregard that. He gets caught up in the moment a lot. A whole lot of guys do. Yeah. So I mean, that, that's one thing I think he could work at. But I'll tell you right now, Chris Paul playing his best basketball against Russell Westbrook playing his best basketball. Russell Westbrook's ceiling is much higher the athleticism man you cannot athleticism is hard to beat and russell westbrook might be the most athletic point guard in the league so Mm -hmm. i don't want to say it's not fair you know i mean russell westbrook he was just blessed with god-given ability chris paul if chris paul had russell westbrook's athleticism it wouldn't even be close. Yeah, I mean, if I had Russell Westbrook's athleticism, well, if West- you had Russell Westbrook, it's just he has a unique thing that you his his you athleticism can't say that. is what makes him a yeah. great player. If he loses his athleticism at any point in his career, yeah, and, and that is a, a good dis- point. that that's is a, a discussion point. to have. Chris Paul can play until he's forty. Chris Paul's going to be Steve well, Nash out there and Jason maybe. Kidd out there. Maybe we'll see. He, you know, he's, I don't know. He if never he... relies on his athleticism. No, but he his body's tearing down. It is, but. You know what? So did Steve Nash's. Yeah, and, and he's still playing. It, had, it no. hadn't torn down as it hadn't broken down the way. Well, the Nash's way, uh, is now with like nerve issues and. He's, yeah, I mean, the, it, but he's not playing. I mean, we talk about you talk about Nash. Nash, Nash is, is like not playing really. I mean, eight nine years older than Chris Paul. Yeah. You think of Chris Paul as an old player though. Yeah, what is he? Twenty nine, thirty. Twenty nine or thirty? He's twenty when he I don't got even here. Think he's thirty. I think yet. he's twenty nine because he was twenty when he got here nine years ago. Yeah. I mean, I understand what you're saying, but I'm. Just, I, the discussion is right now best point guard in the league. I'm like I said, I think Russ is a be- better player overall. I think he's a better player. I just don't think he makes well, you're his just teammates like pigeonholing better. Pigeonholing. Well, I mean things. Then if you don't like the the definition of a true point guard or a, a guy who is supposed to get his team make his teammates better, that's on you. But that's what a point guard is supposed to do. Yeah. Point guard supposed to make his teammates better. And I'm not saying Russell doesn't. I'm saying Chris Paul is far more effective at it than Russell Westbrook. Yeah. It's interesting. It's a, it's an interesting debate. All right. He, he I didn't like his attitude today though. Russell? Yeah. I thought I asked a legitimate question. Well, I mean, is like, this ha- does this have a chance to be the deepest thunder team ever, which by our earlier testimony, where guys like Perry Jones may not be on the too deep. He's the most athletic player in the league, by the way. And who said that? Kevin Durant. There you go. Look, so I think it, I thought that was a legitimate it, question and he wouldn't even uh he wouldn't even entertain it. He because, doesn't want to have because, to think about it. No, I mean, hypotheticals, he just, look, he just doesn't like speaking to the media. And he knows that if I answer, you know, in a surly manner and give them no answers that really mean anything, they're not going to want to talk to me. So I'm it's gonna, working. And yeah, you're right, because guess what? His interview is one minute and 52 seconds today. And tomorrow, are you going to ask for Russell Westbrook? Because I'm probably not going to. I didn't ask for him to, for yeah, today. I don't even know why they brought him today, but... I'm not going to ask for him tomorrow. Unless I need something specifically from him, there's no reason to talk to him. If I see him in the locker room, like, and I think he knows that if he acts like that, especially towards us, he's going to have to talk to us on a minimum level, and that's what he wants to do. The Thunder has done a great job of building its culture. But it's funny because their two biggest stars are becoming their surliest players. Which 
by the way, I mean the young guys. That's probably great. Yeah, that, the young guys are fantastic. You know what? That's probably natural, though. It is because look, you get older, and then you gotta understand the the society they're growing up in is this you know Twitter world where anything Kevin Durant does, it's on a blog. Anything Westbrook does, starting to be you know on, on a blog, or you know if he tweets something, it becomes this big thing. Anywhere they go, there's so much attention that would probably get a lot of people, you know. Surly, maybe not like Westbrook. I mean, Matt Westbrook's always been like that, even when he wasn't getting much attention. There's alternatives like if you Durant. don't want that lifestyle. Go drive a dump <laughs> truck. And here's the thing: go work a nine to five and and raise your family instead of buying a one million dollar engagement ring. Good point. That's a good point. You know, we he actually came to life. Westbrook came to life for just a second yesterday when somebody asked him. Rick Rick um, from Tulsa, uh, Rick Pendergraf. Uh, Tulsa Fox asked him, "Hey Russell, congratulations on your engagement over the summer." And Russell's face sort of relaxed, and, and he smiled and he and said, he "Well, said, thanks, Thank thanks, you, I yeah. appreciate it." And then Rick committed the cardinal crime <laughs> yeah. of a follow-up and said, "Do you want to share how uh, how you popped the question?" And Westbrook, maybe for the only time in two days, looked him. I think looked at him. It looked said, him in the eye. Said, "You'll never know." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which, but but he's right. I mean, who's right? Y- you are. Oh that, yeah. That was, oh, the, yeah, that was yeah, the only yeah, day, yeah, yeah. the time that Westbrook lit up. I don't know. That's just kind of how he naturally is. You think? All right. I, I think you, you mentioned Durant being being surly. Surly. Surly is the word I used. You followed him around. Was he surly all day yesterday? yesterday? Oh, he, I, go he, ahead. I just want to explain what you did. Explain to the people. You you. I mean, that's we were in the press conference. Other people were doing other things. You were just with Durant the whole day, right? That's right. Just following around. Wrote a good story about it. Thank uh, you. If you haven't read it, and it's in today's Oklahoma. You, was he surly? I tagged behind him a little bit, so I gave him some space. He was walking with uh, one of the PR managers, and you know he was his sort of escort guide through the through the circuit. And you know I didn't want to be kind of all up in his grill and and in his conversation, so I kind of hung back a little bit, let those two guys talk, and then whenever he'd go into a room or to a station, then I'd come up and, you know, see what the interactions were like. But uh, I tried to give him his space. I didn't ask many, I didn't ask him any questions the whole two hours I was walking with him, except for at the very end I asked him, you know, you know, what was it all like, describe it, and what's it like to be done. That's it. I asked him two questions. He was pleasant. He was professional. He wasn't pleasant. He was professional. He was uh, he what he didn't go out of his way to be courteous. I in fact one time I even said, "Hey, KD, thanks for uh, letting me do this." And he halfway looked back at me as I was hanging back and said, "I didn't okay this." <laughs> <laughs> and I said, "Well, thanks for being cool with it. Whatever, I appreciate it." And uh, you know that just kind of those little things tell yeah. me like he's not really, you know, he's gonna be courteous, he's gonna be professional, but he's not gonna extend himself to be overly friendly. You know what the truth? The truth of the matter and is, and we wrote a bad headline. I mean, I'm, I'm what'd not. What we say? <laughs> I got it. We, no, uh, he means. I'm, I'm talking he's in May. Talking I'm about talking in the May. The headline that came oh, out. Oh, oh, I thought you meant today. No, you no. think the headline he, you today think was he's, good? <laughs> do you think he's still? It's like 99 percent of them when it comes to Kevin Durant. There's the one. You think he's still kind of beat up about that? I think he remembers it. I mean, I, I, obviously he remembers but it. But he I think knows he, it wasn't like you that wrote it, or I don't know if these guys distinguish. Faces from organizations and things like I mean they distinguish you. Well, yeah. they know who. Yeah, I'm with them most of the time, more than anyone else. But I'm still a member of the Oklahoman. So if the Oklahoman does something bad, if you write a bad column, he's looking at me just like I'm Barry yeah, Trammell. Although maybe Durant, in. maybe Durant. I'm not sure if Russell Westbrook has any idea on the face of the earth who I am or who I work for, he knows who you he's are. He's given zero clues. He knows who you are. He's given zero clues. No, uh, I know I know that he knows where I work for, and I know that he knows because uh, – that's actually a good story. Um, I like good stories. He was pretty courteous to me early in the season last year, and I, I hadn't gone on any road trips, and I started going on road trips in December, and I remember being in Sacramento, and uh, I was actually doing a story about how his, his defense was, uh, you know – Improving. Probably improving, yeah. It was improving, and they were, you know, Brooks was talking about trying to make him all defensive team. So I went up and I asked him some questions about, you know, is he would he take pride in trying to be all defensive team? And he was courteous, like he was. I was like, you know, 
all the, through the first month. And then after it, there was a media scrum talking to like Jeremy Lamb or something, and he called me back over. He's like, hey, man, come here. He said, like, you know, you've been around us a little while now. Like, who, who do you work for? I was like, oh, you know, I'm with the Oklahoma, and, uh, you know, I, I'm the new beat guy with Darnell. And he's like, oh, man, I thought you were like New York Times or something. And <laughs> he like he gave me a weird – like squinty eye, and ever since he <laughs> has not, that day on, he has not been as okay. nice to me. Now we're getting somewhere. He knows exactly who you are, Barry, and what? he knows who Jenny Carlson is, and he knows who Mike Sherman is, and he probably is going to know well, who Eric Horn is before. Well, Jackie O sticks out. I mean, she's a female, and but how does he know who we? He's given no signs that he knows who I am. That was a sign. Well, we've covered and him I, for I, six I have, years. Well, and so what? My daddy's a subscriber. We could you, go look you it wanna, up. You want to know another reason? I I know he follows stuff. He got mad at me once for tweeting that he was going to be at the KU Oklahoma State game. About an hour before tip off, I said, uh, you know, he, they might be at the game. Uh, him and Durant had talked about it, and he got mad Barry, about that. So why, he, he, he wanted to go he incognito? The, he want, he's hoping he could get in and out look, look, without anybody noticing look, <laughs> Kevin Durant and Russell Westbrook look, I, at I, Gallagher I, I completely agree that it was kind of a ridiculous thing, but it, it showed that he had – for some reason, seen the tweet. I don't. Yeah, maybe he searches so. his name. I maybe. think he does search his name because remember that one time Russell he West just Trump. tweeted his name, and it, I mean, it looked like he was trying to search his name, but he actually hit new tweet, and he just <laughs> Russell Westbrook's account tweeted Russell well, Westbrook. Well, there you go, Barry. So yes, he knows who we are. He follows it. And best writer in the state, maybe in the region, you might be the best writer in the country. He has to know who you he are. He doesn't have to know. He, he knows does, who I you guarantee. Are. Serge Ibaka didn't know who Mitch McGarry was. Well, it's possible well, for Russell Westbrook. we've examined the reasons why Serge Ibaka is not maybe like them as far as following his stuff. Serge Ibaka doesn't you know seem to be as social here's what, media here's savvy. What we'll do. Here's what we do. If you guys will help me remember, next time we're over there and Russell Westbrook's holding court and we can't think of one thing to ask him, I'll ask him, hey, Russell, do you know who I am and that who I work for? That ain't going to end well. That is not going to end well. <laughs> well, we'll just get it out there. We've had a discussion. Be Let's back. get it on video. I'll say this. Russell, do you know what this guy's name is? And If he knows your name, then he obviously knows who you what are. What if he so. says a-hole? What? Can I say a-hole on this or are we going to get uh, – thank you. Uh, thank you. <laughs> I'm pushing it. Uh, I think you've called for the network censors. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um. <laughs> It's a quote. What if Russell Westbrook says that? Like, I mean, I think that's how he looks at us. Well, yeah, probably. Well, not any doubt about that, but oh well. Oh, anyway. That's why we got to get it on video. It's pro- what you said about, I think, RFD, I think you said about these guys, or one of you said it. These guys have grown up when everything they say Slater said it. Yeah. is sent out and, and magnified. and I can, under- I can understand why they're a little gun shy. I can understand why they get tired of this. Yeah, for sure. And then, frankly, I mean, I... A little bit of organization. We ought to sit down and say, you know what? We, we don't need to talk to Russell Westbrook every day. Once a week would be fine with most of us. So, I mean, I think there's some things we could do to improve, but 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 Russell's ne- definitely needs to change his demeanor. I think in dealing with the media and with the public, um, because that's how the public connects with him is through the media. Yeah, but I don't think he cares. So I don't think he's. Going I, I to. don't think he does care, but he should care, and people need to sh- show him that. Because they swear he's not like that in real oh, life. Oh yeah, yeah. They every, swear. Every, yep. Well, why should he care as long as he keeps getting the money, checks keep clear, money and fame. clothing lines, and mm-hmm. like, why yeah. should he care? What, what's his incentive for caring? It, just being. I mean, it, it, do you care what other people think about you? Maybe, maybe he doesn't. Um. Like you said, he's getting checks. He's getting clothing lines. He's getting buckets. He gets buckets. There's no doubt about it. Yeah. And that's why he gets the The money. bigger issue to me, guys, and this is, I mean, when I talked about the two players who have that attitude, will that seep down to the rest of the guys? The point that I tried to make earlier is that Thunder has put in all of this time trying to build this culture. Well, when your two best players have a certain attitude, then what's going to happen if that – Creeps down to Reggie Jackson, Jeremy Lamb. Well, that wouldn't be good. Perry Jones, it, Mitch no McGarry, Stephen think, Adams. There's no reason to think it will. Well, yes, there is. I mean, it hadn't. Well, I don't think it will as far as, like, because we talk about hadn't. Durant and Westbrook being surly, but they're not. if they're in the locker room or chilling with the, their teammates, they're not, like, mean to them. Uh, you know, they're, they're, it's at least it seems that they're still, you know, cordial with them. So I don't think in that sense it will. Maybe with the media, because... 
you know, I've I got another Western story. <laughs> I've got plenty of them. Um, I was in Boston, and uh, I was they had a shoot around, but then after the shoot around, it, it came out that Durant wasn't going to play. So I needed to talk to I think it was Reggie. Uh, you know about you know what it, what we didn't know at shoot around, and he because they had a shoot around, Reggie didn't necessarily have to talk to me, but he was like gunu. Uh, he's like, yeah, I'll talk to you. And then Russell on the other side, hey, don't talk to him. We had shoot around. You're not, you know, you don't need to talk to him. So I think in that sense, they may get, you know. Did he go ahead and talk to you? Yeah, Reggie just because you know Reggie. Reggie. Reggie's a free spirit. Yeah. He does. He, he does what he Reggie what wants he to wants do. To do. Yeah. But here's the thing. Russell has always been this way. Kevin started off. So you're thinking. You know, we, we wrote the headline Kevin sent. We've written that before, right? Kevin started off like an angel. And now I think being around Russell Westbrook has impacted him and it's soiled okay. him a little bit. Let me ask you this. He's turning into that sort of How guy. much of that is the product of Westbrook and how much of that is just Durant's stated desire to get a little mean streak in it, all areas? I think it's two things. I think, it, I think it's in both areas. I think one, if you notice, Russell Westbrook and Kevin Durant's lockers, no matter where they go, home or on the road, right next to each other. They're always around each other. So whatever Russell's doing, Kevin's right there hearing it, seeing it, experiencing it. Russell's in his ear when we're in there, when we're not in there. And I think that's starting to come down on him. Um, Steve Bullpit, who covers the Celtics uh, for the Boston Herald, told me that Rajon Rondo started off great. Really? He did. And you know what happened? Garnett. Kevin Garnett came to town. And slowly but surely... Rajon Rondo turned into the whatever they want to call him, arrogant, um, prickly, just sort of curmudgeon, jerkish, curmudgeon type of guy. And it We're was because of Kevin Garnett. We're to the media about their dealings with the media, right? Yeah, I think these guys are mostly different with the public. That, Although I've heard stories about Russell Westbrook back and forth. I've heard some people say they've run into him in public and he was great. And I've heard some people say he was a jerk. Sounds um, like he's incredibly moody. Well, no yeah, doubt about I, that. I, I'd agree with that. Now, I all, I've gotten great reports from Russell, like on community events. Yeah. In fact, he's out with three other guys, not of his stature, at at high school or something. And I went to U.S. Grant High School. My cousin teaches out there, and she said all of them were great. All the guys were great, but she said Russell was extra spectacular. Just. Acted like one of the kids and just connected with him, and she just raved about the way he conducted himself. So I was pleased to hear that. That made me feel good. Well, on the flip side, me and Slater play basketball with a guy every now and again. I'm pretty sure you probably don't know who I'm talking about, but you've played with him. His mom sold him a house, and the guy was asking for a picture, and the guy showed me Russell Westbrook mean mugging him in the picture. He's taking a picture with him, and Russell's not even looking at the camera. He's looking at the guy like, who are you, and why am I taking this picture with you? <laughs> it's the funniest picture you'll ever see, and it's so Russell Westbrook. Um, so there's stories, you know, that are all over the place. But the one last point I'll make on this is that um, I think the pl- the pressure, playoff pressure, yeah. um, you those know, guys are the, always the under the spotlight. Yeah. I think that's really yeah. starting to creep in and get in the Kevin Durant and Russell Westbrook's. Like like we said, Russell Westbrook's always been like this. But Kevin Durant, I think that pressure is really starting to start to eat at them a little bit. Yeah, yeah. that's a good point. No, I, these guys do live under a microscope. I mean, I don't. It's not an existence I would want to live. It's I not. agree with you. I'd love the paycheck. But, I was about yeah. to say you, you can keep you the fame. I would not want the pressure of trying to tell America how to dress. That would just uh, that would put me under. Well, a very if you didn't serious. have any guidelines, everything you threw out, like this lime green jacket you're wearing, Barry. people say it was great. Well, there you go. There's, there is no pressure. There needs to be a trammel line. I, would you rock that lime green jacket? I can't. There are no words. It's a good look. I like it. <laughs> you realize you, it's you realize it's, it's green. I mean, I got a green shirt, green pants. I got green shoes on. I don't know if you guys even noticed. I them, saw your I green got shoes. My green I, shoes. They look a little bit like Bottom what you Italy. get at the AMF lanes on Hefner. No, right. Swag. Yeah. This is BT swag. You bought those in Italy? Italy, America. Well, not America, but Italy in Europe. Yes, Can I we did. make a clothing line just called BT swag? <laughs> You're moving closer and closer to Sam Presti. Well, I don't know if that's a bad thing or not. Do you looking more like what Sam Presti would wear today with that? Well, I had to do a video. And I, everyone can't video. show up in my days are showing up in black V-neck. I can't do that anymore. I'm sorry. 
You cannot hate on the black AC's V-neck. AC's got to... AC's got to wear something he can get off quick. He, <laughs> yeah. likes, he likes to go around shirt. We're just glad you got a shirt on today. Well, anyway, let's. Uh, you mentioned throughout the thing we were we were talking, and, and somebody mentioned Reggie Jackson being a free spirit and uh, kind of doing his own thing. He doesn't with the media. Doesn't Barry mentioned it? He doesn't go the thunder way. And we're talking about media day, and he certainly stuck to that yesterday. I mean, he I, he did not demand to start, but I mean, he will not back down from his stance that he wants to be a starter. Were Were you surprised? The, the reason why I was a little surprised yesterday, Darn, I mean, like we've mentioned, he, he he mentioned to Darnell when he was talking over the phone in China that he wanted to be a starter, and that became a story. I thought he was going to back down a little bit from it yesterday because he's with the Thunder media relations, he's around his teammates. And it would be kind of be a distraction if he kept going, but I mean, he just he took it to another level yesterday. I thought I did too, and I like the guy so much. I'm a little bit bewildered. I don't really understand this. You know, talking about striving to be the best, wanting to be the best. What he's really saying is he wants to be a star. That's yeah. what he's saying. He, that, I, yeah, I think I'm, you know he's not talking about starter. He's talking about like feature right. guy, number one or number two on a so team. So I don't, you know, that that does not. You know that doesn't jive with with the DNA that Sam's always talking well, about. Not with, only with the Reggie DNA, Jackson. it doesn't jive with signing a contract with the Thunder because right. you're not gonna be the guy on the Thunder. No, so I don't know. Maybe he can. Maybe he can go be the point guard at a really good team. Maybe Dallas will sign him next summer. I don't know, but the odds are, if he wants to be the point guard star somewhere, he's going to have to go to a, a lesser team. Yeah, it's it's interesting because the stuff he was saying about being, like you mentioned, being the greatest and this and that, the guys he's mentioning Jordan, and I'm all for a guy having high standards on himself. I think Reggie Jackson is going to be a very good player in the NBA. But, it, you know, realistic expectations. You're not going to be Michael Jordan. You're not Kevin Durant. You just don't have that skill set. Well, he's not Russell Westbrook. You're not Russell I mean, Westbrook. He, we don't have to go too deep into the comparison. And, like, we see him every night together. Yeah. He's not Reggie Jackson. Like the baseball player? Nobody got it. Move on. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. Reggie uh, Jackson's a Hall of Famer. He Come is. Mr. October. No, I agree. Yeah, yeah. So, Move when on. he's talking about all the greats I've seen started, I mean, yeah, if we're talking like top 15 players in NBA history, which – you know, I'm sorry, Reggie. I, I like you. I like you as a player. You're not going to be a top 15 player. There are plenty of greats, Hall of Famers even. Manu Ginobili is going to be a Hall of Famer that have basically their entire career come off the bench. Well, I blogged today about some of the best six men in history. So, I mean, Kevin McHale came off the bench more than half the time. John Havlicek, Bobby Jones. You know the thing about that list, though, Barry? What's that? Most of those guys came before 19. 19- 80. And that's a good point. Mono Ginobili May, didn't. Maybe before. I said most. There's about two or three contemporaries. Jamal Crawford, Manu Ginobili, Jason Terry. And I think Reggie's a better overall player than Jamal Crawford. Not not nearly the score, yeah. but I think he's a better overall player probably, than Jamal you're Crawford. You're probably right. But I don't know that he's Who's the third guy you said? Hey, Jason don't, Terry. Don't get me riled oh. up over here with that oh, stage. Oh, <laughs> boy. Here we go. <laughs> now, uh, Jason Terry's good. Yes, he no, is. No, I meant with the Jamal Crawford statement. Mm. But, uh, okay, all that being said, I am kind of think he should start. I think they should start him, and I think they might start him. You know, my problem with – and, Barry, you've made this argument. Slater, I th- you've written it. Slater, I think you've made this argument. There's this notion that if he starts, it's going to kill the Thunder's bench. No. And it's going to just completely ruin their depth. You know the solution to that? Go out and get someone for the bench. It's not that complicated. You don't have to go get another star. Go out and get two or three players. Who's your boy? Glenn Davis. Guys like yeah. that. Not guys who are going to come in and score 15 points. Look, get some complimentary role let me players ask you that guys can a sustain. Question. Can I ask you guys a question? How good of a ball player right now is Sebastian Telfair? I don't think – if he's playing minutes, I don't think that's a good sign. He was in China last year. He's never really averaged more than like four. four I don't know. I thought it was know. a strange signing to sign somebody like that who might not play. Maybe is there a chance they believe that 
Reggie Jackson. I, Topher, I, I, I thought, said something interesting yesterday. He said, oh, I've always heard my name in trade rumors of Oklahoma City. I, I yeah, that kept hearing that come up. I know they liked me. So that I was like, really? I, so is Presti really always like this? I guy? have no idea what to make of Sebastian Telfair on this team. I, I don't know where he fits. I don't know if he's any good. I know that as he was walking by the other day and I'm sitting there standing with Kevin Durant as he's in a room, he extended his hand and said hello. He's a friendly guy, but other than that, I don't know anything. I mean, I know his story, but I don't I don't know where he is in his career. I don't know how he can help this team. I don't know if he's going to make the team. I think he'll make the team. Uh, I think they want a third point guard. I think Reggie Jackson may start, so you're, you're going to want a, a, a kind of a, a – Backup point guard, but my point in all of this is people talk about you know you're taking Reggie off the bench out of that bench rotation. Stagger rotations. There's a way you can play Reggie Jackson and Russell Westbrook. You can pl- have at least one of them on the court at all times, and you can have Reggie lead the second unit still, even though he's technically the starting two guard. You know you play Russell the first six minutes, and then you play Reggie the rest of the first quarter. As the point guard, and then when Jackson comes out at the start of the second quarter, Westbrook comes back in, and he plays the first eight minutes. Then they play the last four minutes of the second quarter together. There's ways those two can always be your point guards. One of them can always be leading the second unit, and they can both start and both close. An idea I've talked about for years, going back to the James Harden days. Can he guard well enough? I don't think he can. Well, I mean, but I think his offensive abilities more than make up for his defensive inability. Let me ask you this question: If Reggie Jackson plays, let's say, thirty-two minutes a game, and as a sixth, whether he starts or comes off the bench, as a sixth man, if he plays thirty-two minutes a game. I would estimate that he would play what mm, fourteen minutes with Durant and Westbrook, something like that, and eighteen minutes without him. Maybe sixteen and sixteen, something along there. If he starts, Durant's playing thirty-eight, thirty-nine minutes a game, so that seems high to me. You're saying with both or just with one? With both of them, with both of them, and I, you know, we, you can fudge the numbers. If he start, if if he starts, he'll play more minutes with Durant and Westbrook, just right naturally. Yeah. Is there a chance though that his shots would go down if he starts? Not if you stagger the rotations well enough. And pass the ball. Like Russell Westbrook and Kevin Durant's got to pass the ball more. And now, do you want Reggie Jackson to take more shots at the expense no, of those two? That's of my course point. not. Yeah, of course not. Answer. But I think the threat of him alone, it's not about shots. And he'd have to understand this, which is one of the reasons I don't think he's going to be here much longer because it's just no way of working out in his favor the way he wants it to work out. He'd have to sacrifice shots to be a starter, but the threat of him in there, I think, makes the Thunder much more dangerous than not having him in there. You got to have him in there as much as possible. Andre Robertson, yes, he can play defense. He can rebound. He can even score in various other ways, not as a shooter. Around the basket. Around the basket, cutting, Cutting. things like that. But I think his offense, for the most part, is such a liability that I think it negates his defense. And you're going back to relying too heavily on Kevin Durant, Russell Westbrook. And as we've seen, Serge Ibaka gets lost in the fourth quarter. But what if you start Steven Adams instead of Perk? That's an offensive upgrade. That is. Well, well, I mean, we can talk all day about this. I think Steven Adams should start regardless of who starts the We all agree on that. I think he should. I don't think we all agree that he will. Yeah. Um, But the thing, the reason why I find it weird that Andre Robertson is being labeled as the favorite as a starter, if Andre Robertson doesn't start, he probably doesn't play much. No, that's right. You're right. So that why All of a not? Sudden, what, Perry Jones is back on the yeah. TV. So so maybe if you start Reggie Jackson, that opens up a roster, you know, uh, a rotation spot for somebody that provides something like you know, uh, like a Perry Jones will get more minutes or Mitch McGarry, Mitch McGarry, somebody like that. Um, and the fact that Robertson, if he doesn't start, probably won't play much, should tell you that he probably shouldn't start. My opinion. Well, it's an it's an interesting it's an interesting question. I Why cannot just, wait to see what they do. Robertson is probably the twelfth player on the team, something like that. Yeah, yeah, somewhere close to there. So it's a good question. Why would you start him? But the reason <laughs> is because it could be a really good fit for what they need at the start of a game. I think me and Slater both 
think that Jeremy Lamb should start. Is that right, Slater? You think you're on the Jeremy I, Lamb? Well, I are you, are you if just it's, Reggie? If it's between Jeremy Lamb and Robertson, I'd say Jeremy Lamb. But, but you'd rather Reggie. I kind of think it would be interesting if you could get Reggie as the two, and Lamb coming off the Lamb and Morrow coming off the bench, and, and just just it's about how you stagger the Barry, rotations. Who would you go with? Back who would you go with? You have to decide tonight for tomorrow's opening and night. And you not you're not Scott Brooks. Yeah, you're you. Jeremy Lamb. Really? Mm-hmm. You were like his biggest critic last year. At the start of the year, but he, I think I, I, I came around. I thought he played pretty decent last year. Oh. I I liked the signing of Karan Butler, but in retrospect, it turned out to be a disaster. Yeah, they needed Lamb in the playoffs. They just cut down on Jeremy Lamb's progression. Yeah. And I'm guessing Jeremy Jeremy Lamb. Or Jeremy, Lamb. Yeah. Jeremy Lamb looks to me like a guy – who could really use a boost of confidence. If they came to him and said, Jeremy, we're going to start you. We believe in you. I think I think we'd see a better player. Let me ask you this, or, Barry. Or Let me go, ask you this. K. Yeah. No, he won't say K. He'll say, cool. Cool. <laughs> so does, so I I'm, like Jeremy Lamb. <laughs> I like him. So I'm out there on tip-off? Or, is that how that works? <laughs> they going to call my name? <laughs> Word? Cool. <laughs> I like Jeremy Lamb. I How can you I not do. like Jeremy like Lamb? Jeremy. Barry, the message that it sends to him if they don't start him. Please explain the philosophy to me. Because for years they're about development, getting better every day. It's a process. You know, they're trying to improve on things. But then you send this message to this guy who you traded James Harden well, for and saying you, you're not good enough to play defense enough well enough to be a starter and we don't think that you can grow into that as the season goes on so we're going to start this guy here's what i like about jeremy lamb starting the thunder has long passed the the uh, point where the regular season is all that important something we've talked about everything yeah. is yeah. about the playoffs yep and that's why I think, I think if you gave too. if you gave well Adams too if you gave Jeremy Lamb and Stephen Adams eighty two starts of guarding people on the perimeter guarding people in the paint playing defense playing in pressure situations they're going to be much better players come April and May than they are if they get twelve Which would fifteen mean minutes the a night. Thunder are a better team. So that's what I like about that. Here's the deal: Reggie Jackson's your offense, and Andre Robertson clearly is your defense, but Jeremy Lamb is. He's good offensively and has the potential to to play good defense. I mean, Reggie Jackson has the potential to be an average defender. I thought somebody asked a really good question yesterday, which is, can you start two six foot three guards in the NBA? Which you can. Guess what? They did it in the, the Reggie Western Jackson Conference started Final. the last yeah, two games. Of the he Western. did, and or last two last, or the last four. four, last four, the last, last four. four, last four, and they played great in in three and four. And they played good in six. They just lost an OT to a really good Yeah, Spurs they did, team. but this goes back to the bench and why I wouldn't start Reggie Jackson. Well, they the, also got lit up by Janelle. Well, you know, people, can you start two, six, three guys? Well, guess what? They're going to do this year regardless of who starts. They're going to close with two, six, three guys. It's a good point, too. It's an excellent point. So you can start them. Huh. But I just, I think they've done really well with a defensive sp- with a defensive specialist in the starting lineup, and I think Red, Jeremy Lamb offers you know six seven you know, big wingspan. He gives you a lot of potential. I'd why like not to find just out. try it though? I'm yeah, not, I, I don't. That, I'm not suggesting you mean Reggie Jackson or Jeremy Lamb or both. I'm not suggesting shuffling guys in and out of the lineup. I don't think that'll work. That'll get a coach fired. You know, you start tinkering with chemistry you know and all of like? that. But just try, just try it and well, see if it might. works. You know what I don't like when they go when they say you know. We do this defensive thing, and it's worked for us the last few years. We've won fifty nine games. We've won sixty games. Yeah, but they started Jeremy the Lamb. La- well, no, okay, you know, if they started Jeremy Lamb last year, they're winning fifty nine games. And no, you, you're right. You know, that's what I'm why saying? I'm saying that's why I say the regular season doesn't mean that much and anymore. Barry, not just this April and May, if you put Lamb and Adams in there, but how about next April and May? That's a good point. You no, know, it's a great in point. In April and May after that, these guys are 21, 22 years old. I don't know how old your boy Steven is. 20, 21. I think you just turned 21, which watch out, Brickdown. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you and Steve Stone Cold out oh, on the town geez. together. I'd pay to see that. <laughs> but that's my point. No, I mean, it's, it's not just this no, it's postseason. A great point. It's the it's a great postseason point. after that and it's the one after point. that. It's a great point. I mean, you're building with these the guys. The best thing about this Thunder situation, it's a dilemma, but they've got a lot of options. 
Yeah, I mean, it's like... I would not do this, though. I would not start Reggie Jackson trying to placate him. No, I wouldn't either. I would start him if I thought that was the best move. But, well, they've been starting Kendrick Perkins trying to placate him because we've all seen that that hadn't been the best move. Lately. Yeah, and I was going to say, you know, maybe placating him in some ways, if you can learn well, how to take your rotations, is a good idea. Placate's because, the wrong word for Perk. I mean, they weren't trying to... They weren't trying to influence him or anything. I mean, if you if you started Reggie, when I say placate, I mean start him in case that'll make him resign. Well, what if that ends up being a good move? You know, well, for better for move, team chemistry a and move. a better chance of you signing him. If it's a good move, him. it's a good move. I think it's a good move. Well, maybe they will. Maybe they will. We'll see. Is your guess on opening night still Andre Robertson? It's my guess. It's mine. Robertson I'm going and out Perk. on a limb. Robertson and they're Perk. starting Reggie Jackson. Are you saying Reggie and Steven? I'm going to say Robertson and, and Adams. Yeah, I'm going to say Reggie and Adams. Reggie and Adams. I think there's no way they start both of those guys. I think Robertson and Adams might be the the way that they go, but I'm still going to lean toward Perk. I think Perk's quad injury gives Scotty sort of an out to sort of. You know, get get uh, Adams more playing time early, and if it hey, goes Perk, well, let's ease you back in, and then you never yeah, get back in. Yeah. Mm. Brooks said yesterday when somebody asked him about starting two six three guys, which obviously was in reference to maybe starting Jackson. He said, "You know, that's a good question. I've been thinking about that this summer. Yeah, so you know, he's thinking about it. Yeah, that's true. And um, here's the thing about Perkins: Perkins still has great value in certain situations." They'll never beat Memphis without him until Zach Randolph's gone. Isn't Perk the perfect guy to have as basically a specialist off the bench? You know, hey, they're playing the Rockets tonight, and you know, how, get him 15 minutes guarding Dwight Howard. Get him 15 minutes guarding Randolph when they play the Grizzlies. Or 30 sometimes. Yeah. I mean, he, okay, there's yeah. teams he's going to have yeah. to play a bunch on, okay. and then there's teams he's worthless against. Zero minutes, but if he's starting, you have to give him a minute. Well, that goes back to my point about why not just try some different things. Why does it have to be this strict, stringent rotation every night? I mean, why not tinker with it and say, all right, some nights you're not going to play. Some nights we're going to need you, and you are going to play 30 minutes. That's that's kind of what I'd like to see from the staff more. I, I would agree. Yeah, don't be and so And like I said earlier, their argument is always like because it's worked so well in the past, and it's like, you know, it's worked so well in the past that you had Serge Ibaka, Russell Westbrook, and Kevin Durant in those other three starting spots. That's why you're winning 60 and 59 games. Try some other things. I feel you. Cool. 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 Word. You mean they're going to win 59 games? If I start. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you'll say that. <laughs> if, uh, if I start, we'll win 55 games? Maybe, Jeremy. You so, know I am. So, Coach, what do you want me to do out there? Offense points, defense play well. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We'll uh, <laughs> we'll talk to you again. But what next week? I guess are we back on a weekly? Yeah, we got to get back to a weekly basis. All They'll right. have uh, the thing in Choctaw Sunday, and then the first preseason games October eighth. So maybe we'll talk after the Choctaw open scrimmage. Thing. After the Choctaw before the first preseason yep. game. We'll talk to you next Monday or Tuesday. See you. Durant pull up jumper off the rim and oh, and the Thunder win! Oh, come on, let's sing the Thunder song. Boy. When, when you, you hear, hear the sound of thunder, thunder, don't you get too scared. Just grab your thunder buddy and say these magic words.